Well, my name's Greg Fenby. The company is Eco Liquid Waste. We've started off back in 2009. Uh, did a business study on liquid waste for about a year prior to starting and identified that there was a lot of things being done not the right way. But uh, So we decided to have a go, borrowed a lot of money and uh, got into it. Started by doing the job right and that's our commitment. We're not prepared to do it if it's not done properly. Um, there's a lot of people that we identified also that don't know about septic tanks other than uh, you flush the toilet or it's out in the yard somewhere. So we did a lot more research, identified that uh, about 97, 98% of people that we were dealing with didn't have any idea. So we came up with a septic tank pack, which we went to suppliers, got wholesale pricing, put it together. We give it away for free. It's not at any charge to the customer. We don't pass on the charge but it gives them an idea of what they should and shouldn't be doing. Well, the primary thing to do is to ensure that everything that goes down the septic um, is safe for use in a septic tank. You can read the packaging prior to purchase. That will tell you or identify whether it's safe for use in a septic tank or a treatment plant or recycled water system. Um, there's a lot of myth about eco-friendly products that uh, because it says eco-friendly doesn't necessarily mean that it's suitable for a septic tank. Um, bicarb soda and white vinegar is a perfect example. Everybody thinks that that is an ideal green way to clean but for a septic tank that's the wrong thing to do. The alkalinity, uh, the pH, it, it throws it all out and the beneficial bacteria can't sustain itself. So a perfect example is that. I went to a place once and kids are always amazed, they always come out and watch and uh, there was two little boys, one was about three and the other was about five and um, anyway it got to the bottom of the tank and there happened to be a, a, a train engine in the toilet and the older boy looked in there and I said what happened here, somebody poo out a train and the older boy said there's my train and the young one looked real sheepishly and said you wouldn't let me play with it so he flushed it down the toilet. <laughs> Pretty much if you don't eat it in a normal sitting or a normal meal in that sort of volumes you shouldn't be putting it down the toilet. Uh, you should be, if you've got a grease trap um, you should empty your grease trap every 12 months. Um, you can either do that yourself or we can come and do it for you. Uh, similarly if you don't have a grease trap and you have a septic tank uh, that traditionally means or generally means that you have an all water system so everything will go straight into the septic. So if you pour the fat after baking and eggs down the sink it'll end up in the septic tank and again that's not good it clogs everything up it builds up all around the inlet and it can end up in a blockage it's septics work similarly to your gut if you eat the wrong foods the beneficial bacteria uh, dies in your stomach and that's why people uh, they have your kilt or inner blue health or inner health plus that type of thing because that's anaerobic bacteria and as it passes through your body it goes into the tank and that's sufficient to feed the tank providing you're looking after the tank. Yeah there's anaerobic bacteria and there's aerobic bacteria um, in the septic it requires anaerobic bacteria and out in your drain lines it requires aerobic bacteria. Okay well uh, the certificate of approval under the EPA in Victoria it stipulates in there they should be desludged every three years after, whilst a septic tank will still function for many, many years, it's the water quality that comes out the discharge lines is what is affected. After three years, uh, all reports are that the E. coli levels are outside safe standards or acceptable standards. So by emptying the tank, then you start it all over again. Um, if you don't empty your tank regularly, suspended solids will go out through the lines and uh, it can cause blockages in your drain lines or in your pump wells with sludge and whatnot. Uh, premature failure of your pumps if you have a pump. Uh, some systems have a sand filter prior to uh, discharge just for filtration. Uh, if they get contaminated it can cost anything between five to $8,000 to replace. Well uh, traditionally a septic cylindrical um, and they have an inlet and an outlet at opposed ends of the tank and they're at the top of the tank. They have a dropper which is about 300 mil down into the tank. So when the tank is functioning normally, the tank is full of liquid to the top. What happens over the period of the three years is the sludge on the bottom will increase and the crust on the top. 
So you have three layers. When you flush the toilet, the solid organic material sinks to the bottom of the tank, the paper floats to the top of the tank, and you've left with a clear water table in the middle, or a water table. Uh, the sludge in the bottom of the tank starts to eat away, and as fresh material, or organic material, lands on the top, the bacteria keeps eating that, and when it gets to a point of uh, the sludge being too high, that's when you get suspended solids coming out through your drain lines, and that's where you risk blockages, and the drains get like a black jelly in it, and they don't function properly. That's it. Thanks a lot.